So I've got this killer idea. Thank you for calling Nintendo of America. Hey guys, I got a great idea for a product for and I want to got the computer one. again. I want to make a Nintendo branded soda and every single flavor would be like a different character. Mario's red, so he's going to be like our normal soda flavor. Luigi's green, that makes him like a lemon lime thing. If you know your party's extension, please dial it now. I wonder how many numbers are in the extension. Peach is pink, so maybe a strawberry or no, peach is peach. I got to write this down. Hello, this is Jamie. Hey Jamie, I have some product ideas and I'm wondering if you're the person I should be talking to uh, over there. This is the parking garage? Okay. Yeah, I've heard stories in and around the industry, you know, people talking Nintendo can be hard to work with. And I'm not saying that's been my experience, but I I guess I'm kind of saying that's been my experience. But I have a plan. This, this is an art channel, so maybe if we mock up the designs of the cans ourselves, They'll see what we're talking about. Before we get to the steps, I have to have a quick shout out to my sponsor today, which is uh, me. I'm the sponsor. Well, that's pretty cool. I've got some courses on drawing and designing on the iPad. Check out the discount codes in description down below. Anyway, we need steps. Let's break it down. Step number one, sketching. I need to take any ideas I have in my head and get them down onto paper. I usually start in a sketchbook. It doesn't matter if I sketch here or if I do it digitally. I personally think better on real paper. My sketches are ugly, but it helps me figure out what I'm doing. It gets my thoughts down. Once I have my really rough sketches, then maybe I'm gonna move over, start working digitally, taking my best idea, refining it, and polishing it up a little bit further. Now I know at this early stage, I want every can to have its own flavor and have its own color coding to it. So when you see it from a distance, you know which flavor you're looking at. But is your car parked here, well, sir? No. Anyway, step two. Painting. When I start painting, I reduce the opacity of my sketch layer and I create a new layer that I'm gonna start painting on. And if I just started painting on that new layer, what's gonna happen? It's gonna cover up that sketch I'm using. And it makes it hard to see that reference layer. And so what am I gonna do? I'm gonna move that sketch layer all the way to the top of my layers. So that way I'm always gonna be able to see the paint layers that I'm adding below it. For this design, I am using a lot of layers, especially for the clothes and his hat, mostly because I'm planning on reusing parts of this design when I go to repaint Luigi. If everything's on its own layer, it's just gonna be a lot easier to recolor and block that stuff in separately. Once I get my core Mario character together and he's looking pretty good, I move on to step three, designing. One thing I know is I want the cans to be the colors of the character. So in this case, I want the can to be red, but if I put Mario on a red can, he's not really gonna stand out really well. So we're gonna fix that. To do that, I'm making some white circles for Mario to sit on top of so that he pops out. Procreate shape tool makes it really easy to draw a circle. I just draw the best circle that I can. And at the end of that circle, I hold my pencil on the canvas for a second. And that's when the auto shape kicks in and it forms a nice uh, oval circle for me. Now it's not gonna be a perfect circle, but we can make it a perfect circle by placing one finger on the canvas while we're resizing it. It's gonna snap into that perfect circle shape that we're looking for. And I could drag my color in from the upper right hand corner, fill that circle circle and I'm good to go. Now what I want to do with this design is I want to stack a couple circles on top of each other and reduce the opacity as I go. So it's kind of narrowing in the focus on Mario. And I do that by duplicating a layer and resizing that circle down. I'm also going to set the blending mode of these circles to overlay. Overlay is a little more intense than just changing the opacity. It gives me a nice crispy red. So as I get to that fourth circle, instead of using overlay mode, I just make it normal. So it's pure white and I can resize Mario to fit on top of that. So this is looking better already already Mario stands out but I want some kind of texture to the can and I was thinking I could draw some of the power up icons and use them as subtle background images on the surface of the can instead of drawing those one by one I'm gonna use a cheat code up up down down left right left right be a start so each flavor would have a different colored can not going to help me find your car okay instead of drawing some icons I'm gonna be using some vector icons I have left over from an older project I'm just gonna export those as a transparent PNG 
from Affinity Designer and then grab that file, import it into Procreate. Then using my handy arrow tool, I'm gonna grab the green line along the top, which is gonna allow me to rotate it perfectly. I'm gonna get it to about a 45 degree angle, the best I can, and then I'm gonna set this to overlay as well. I want these icons to be just like a subtle background texture. If they're too intense, they're gonna compete with the main character and the logo that I'm gonna be sticking on the can in a minute. I don't want these elements to be fighting for attention when you look at it from a distance. Let's go on to the logo, Procreate has a type tool now and this is making our lives a lot easier. I'm just using the font Futura here. Comes installed on most iPads. Of course, you can always go nuts, go out, find your own fonts, install them right here in Procreate. It's pretty easy to do. I'm also doing a little trick here. I'm duplicating that logo font and I'm changing that color to a dark red. What this is doing is creating a simple drop down effect. And if you're feeling fancy, you could even rasterize that layer and add a little bit of a blur effect to it. I'm gonna keep it as is because I'm not feeling fancy. Brad, the designs look good, but... I know, I should probably get them mocked up on a can or something no, like... No, I mean... No, no, I can do this... Brad, there's already been a power up cola. What? It came out in the 90s, it was a huge flop. Didn't you try Googling this no, first? No, I did not try Googling this first. Step four, Canon. I've got to take my design from one place and get it onto a can. Now this step looks like the hardest step, but actually it's probably easier than you think it is. There are a lot of free resources out there. I found a blog post that I'll link down below that has a whole bunch of different can mockups layered as Photoshop files that you can use for free on the internet. Fortunately for us, Procreate can open up PSD Photoshop files, so we're in business. I picked out this can because it has a bit of a curve to it. Not a lot, just a little bit. Gives it a realistic looking feel. And I want to take a good look at the layer structure of this file. This is where our artwork goes. Really, we could just drop our artwork in here and it's gonna show up on the can because parts of the art we don't want to show are already covered up by a layer mask. Whoa, pause it, layer masks. What are those? Think of it this way. If you're painting a house and you don't want to get paint on the doors or the windows frames, what do you use? You use masking tape along the side and it keeps paint from getting on that part of your house. In fact, it's easy because it's called masking tape because it masks out that part of the window. We're doing roughly the same thing, but digitally here at Procreate. But instead of using tape, we're going to use our pen to color out the areas that we don't want paint showing through. Now this can be really handy. Say you have some artwork and you don't want to actually go out and erase parts of the artwork to make it say fit the can we can put a mask on it and that will allow us to then still move around and edit that artwork without actually having to erase pieces parts of it anyway there's there's a million cool uses for masks out there but this is the one that we're using today now there's a couple housekeeping things we need to do the first thing that we need to do is we need to take our artwork and we need to pull it into our can file there's a lot of different ways we could do this we could export it as a png we could flatten all of those layers i would recommend duplicating those layers first and then flattening one so you can always go back and edit it but however you want to do it you want to outline it maybe three fingers down on the canvas to copy it then we can go to our other file with our can artwork three fingers down tap on paste and now our artwork is there on the canvas now by just dragging that into the clipping position you're going to see it is going to clip to the edge of the can and from there i can use the arrow tool to move it around and get it where i want to be and, and resize it now this is a little detail you may or may not need it but a can is round there's a little bit of a curve to it but our artwork is flat underneath the arrow tool there's an option called warp and if i tap on that it brings up a grid and i can go into the edges of the grid and grab a point and actually drag it down and add a little bit of curve to my can and i can do that on each and every one of those points just to make it curve a little bit. Now our artwork is also still covering the top of the can and the bottom of the can. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna tap on our artwork layer and we're gonna add, yes, a mask. From here, I'm just using the Apple Pencil and the technical pen tool to go in and very carefully go in and smooth out and take out the artwork from the top and the bottom of the can. This is gonna take a little bit of practice, but you're gonna get used to it. And if you mess up, don't worry, you haven't erased your artwork. You just take a white color pen and go in there and clean up the spots where you may have gone over a little bit. I blew through all this pretty fast, but if you're looking to learn more about Procreate, definitely check out some of my other videos or my Udemy courses down below in the description. There's some discount codes. If you have any comments or questions, you know, like, subscribe, all that stuff down below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in a couple of days.